Hello and welcome to this tutorial on nerve gases. Nerve gases, as you know, are one of the most destructive chemicals man has ever invented. Nerve gases, or nerve agents as they're often referred to, aren't actually gases, they're viscous liquids and they serve no other purpose uh, but to destroy people's lives. And I don't mean in an emotional sense, I mean to kill people. Um, but that aside, that dramatic introduction aside, uh, let's have a look at the chemistry and actually see how they work. Okay, so this isn't a history lesson or anything like that on nerve gases, so I'll probably do one of them anyway. This is more about the chemistry and the structure and, and really why nerve gases work the way they do. Okay, it's probably time to say goodbye to Rod and uh, Python Lee Jackson. So let's have a look at the chemistry and the mode of action of nerve gases. The body uses a series and collection of chemical messengers called neurotransmitters, which um, bridge gaps between nerve fibers and, and tissue, if you will. And some of these um, chemical messengers um, can accumulate within that gap, leading to certain conditions. So the body and over time evolution, as it, well, we've evolved so that we have proteins that will mop up those chemical messengers and get rid of them, break them apart basically. And one in particular is called acetylcholine esterase and that gets rid of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is used um, to trigger nerves and uh, make your muscles move and things like that. Now the way nerve gases work is they interfere with this protein called acetylcholine esterase and they stop it doing its job. So what happens is you get an accumulation, or build-up if you will, of a particular neurotransmitter called acetylcholine within the synaptic gap. And so you get these continuous firing mechanisms, and so you get these muscle spasms, which eventually lead to death. Now the way nerve gases work is they form covalent bonds with acetylcholine esterase. So imagine uh, it forms like an ester, but it's a phosphate ester. And that's a really bad thing because now acetylcholine esterase is completely disabled and can't cleave acetylcholine in the synapse. So now it's just going to accumulate there. So if we look at the hydrolysis of Soman, uh, which is a nerve gas, um, with acetylcholine esterase, you see that here actually one of the amino acids, serine, attacks the phosphorus. In doing so, fluorine is released and you get a really strong covalent bond between that serine residue and the phosphate group. So if we now take a look at several uh, nerve gases and acetylcholine, you'll see some common functionalities really. If um, acetylcholine esterase attacks acetylcholine, as shown here, then you'll get a simple ester being formed. If it attacks um, the nerve gases or the nerve agents, then you'll get an oxygen phosphorus bond, which makes it a lot harder to cleave um, in terms of the acetylcholine esterase adduct. And that means that um, acetylcholine esterase isn't free to do its job anymore. And like I said before, acetylcholine will then accumulate in the synaptic gap. The normal mode of hydrolysis is shown here just using water and that regenerates acetylcholine esterase. So that's pretty much it for nerve agents and this tutorial. So until next time, bye for now. <laughs>